So for the last three events, the Yaris has had some kind of problem that has stopped me from getting on the podium. Brakes, a broken shifter, and at this last event, a bad fuel pump. So for the final event of the TRD series, I am not taking any chances. I've got an upgraded fuel pump assembly that I pulled from a Scion XD. I've also got fresh spark plugs that are step colder. And I'm finally gonna address an issue with the 1ZZ throttle body with this adapter plate. So it is very cold. This is the last weekend I have to work on the car before the track day next week. So let's get into it. The first thing I had to do was find a Scion XD at a local junkyard. The fuel pump is located under the rear seats, so those have to be taken out first. This whole assembly is interchangeable with the one in my Yaris. Since the rear seats have been out of my Yaris for a long time, this fuel pump panel is really easily accessible. Next I'm going to hook up the battery and run the car so I can pull the EFI fuse and depressurize the fuel system. With the battery disconnected again, I wanted to clean off the top of this fuel pump assembly so that no dirt or debris falls into the fuel tank. They make special tools to remove this ring lock, but if you don't have one, a hammer and chisel is pretty much the only way to do it. Make sure when you remove the fuel pump assembly that you don't damage the float as that could mess up your fuel readings. Okay, so as you can see, this is the old fuel pump assembly, and this is the new one. They are pretty identical. This came out of a 2010 Scion XD, which has about 30 more horsepower. So this one should, in theory, be designed to handle more horsepower. I believe it's a different part number. Even if they are exactly the same, this is a working one, in theory. It's pulled from a junkyard, so who knows. The Scion XD in the U.S. is essentially what the Vitz RS and the... Uh, upgraded Yaris were in other parts of the world that came with that 1.8 liter 2ZR. So this is the fuel pump that was designed to go into a Yaris, essentially. So we're gonna pop it in, I'm gonna clean it up as much as I can, get as much of this debris off, uh, and then make sure there's no fuel around, and then we'll put this in. If you're going to do this job, make sure you get the ring lock tool. They're only about 30 bucks and you can rent them from AutoZone pretty easily. It's going to take forever. I could have capped off this guy here um, and gotten rid of the whole charcoal canister for an evap delete. Um, that would have saved some weight in the back, but I'm not going to do that because uh, I've only got a little bit of time to work today. Um, but uh, maybe that's something we'll do in the future. So the hope is that this new fuel pump solves the issues that I was having on track, either because my old fuel pump was going out or because I needed more fuel to match the amount of air that I was getting. But I'm not totally convinced that that was the problem, so I'm going to get this fuel pump buttoned up and sealed away, and then we're going to start looking at other possible causes for our fuel cut issue. So everything's pretty much buttoned up in the back. I'm not sure if that's the right uh, adhesive. We'll give it some time underneath that sandbag. But while I'm waiting on that, uh, I've got this throttle body spacer uh, to make the 1ZZ throttle body fit with the 1NZ intake manifold. They kind of fit. Basically, what I think is happening is uh, there's a little bit of a leak between uh, the two ceiling surfaces. So I've got this adapter that's wider on one end and smaller on the other, so we should get a better seal. If we were getting extra air into the cylinder, that could be why we were having misfires, because we were running lean, we weren't getting enough fuel, and the computer backed off everything to make it safe. So we'll try this and see how it does. I've been running this 1ZZ throttle body for a while, so I'll leave a link in the description to the video where I initially installed it. Okay, so I've learned a lot more about this throttle body swap since I did it. There are definitely some things I wish I knew, but at the same time, since this is a track car, not all of them affect me. For instance, one of the main things is the high idle. This thing 
idles when it's cold, uh, about like 2,500 RPM. Um, and there is a way to fix that with this throttle body. There is a set screw right there that's covered in epoxy. If you get rid of the epoxy, you can adjust that set screw and that basically sets where the throttle position sits at idle. This is designed for a larger engine, so it sits open a little bit more. If you can adjust that set screw so that it sits a little more closed, it'll work better at idle for this car. Not a big deal for me because this car is very rarely at idle, and when it is at idle, I actually want it to warm up so the higher RPMs aren't all that bad. Um, but if you were looking at doing this swap or you watched my other video on the swap and it's not working out for you, that might be why. So the throttle body is ready to go on, but as I was cleaning it, I noticed something wasn't quite matching up. So wouldn't you know it, this throttle body spacer uh, must be the wrong one because it doesn't match up. So if this is the issue um, that we're getting a little bit of an air leak there, we're not solving it yet. Uh, I'll try and find another throttle body spacer. I guess I'll put this back on. I got the throttle body back on and the intake resituated, so next it's time to move on to spark plugs. Okay, so next I'm gonna install some spark plugs. This should be really easy. They're step colder, but they're the exact same size. They're iridium, so they're pre-gapped. There's very little that can go wrong with this, but you know, stuff goes wrong when I work on this car, so who knows? These are the spark plugs from the 1.8 liter 2ZZ engine, which was found in the Celica GT and, more importantly, the Lotus Elise. Size and shape wise, they match up perfectly with the original spark plugs, so they should go in without a problem. So with the spark plugs done, the throttle body back on, and the fuel pump installed, it was time to try this all out. Okay, the battery is connected back up. I'm going to let the fuel pump prime once or twice, and then we can try and start this up. I don't hear a fuel pump priming. Let's see if it starts. Something's definitely misfiring. It's gone into full limp mode. Uh, let's see what's going on. Thanks to my bank's iDash, I could see that we were getting cylinder misfires, but we were also getting a throttle position sensor code. I went ahead and checked the connector on the throttle body and checked the gap on all the spark plugs. Uh, okay, those look like they're gapped properly. Um, Technically, these are the spark plugs for the 2ZZ engine. Um, they're supposed to be a step colder, um, which would hopefully help. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it's helping. So I'm going to try again. If that doesn't work, I'm going to put the old spark plugs in or run to AutoZone and grab some fresh ones uh, that are designed to fit. I'll do something will go wrong. So it turns out the throttle position sensor was just a little loose. Uh, the plug just hadn't gone all the way back on. Um, it now doesn't uh, freak out at high revs. Um, at least it didn't initially. Um, but sitting here, it's not under load. So I'm gonna take it out for a test drive and uh, see if I can get it to do what it did on track before. This is the biggest thing, right? The issue that we were having with the fuel cut was only ever happening 
in the most extreme situations on track. So if I can get it to happen, like just on a normal road, then we're definitely not making progress. But if I can't get it to happen, then I still don't know if I've actually fixed the issue. So that's it for this video. The final event of the TRD series is next week. And uh, I think this is okay. Uh, we didn't get the throttle body issue fixed. Uh, hopefully the fuel pump, uh, it was the issue. The new spark plugs are colder and uh, hopefully it was just everything uh, kind of getting acclimated that gave us those uh, misfires early on because we're not getting them now. Uh, Fingers crossed, I guess? I really don't want another track day where I can't finish a session because of uh, some mechanical issue. This is a Toyota, it's supposed to be reliable. Um, I guess I'm the thing making it unreliable. But uh, whether it survives or not, you'll have to see in the next video. <laughs>